Hey everyone, Nick Dearbird is here teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're gonna to be talking about probabilistic modeling. This is an introduction to the topic at the start of our lecture series on a topic. So thus far, we have built out models that have been completely deterministic. Um, whatever inputs you pass, you're gonna get a certain answer as a result. And as long as you're passing those same inputs, you're going to get that same output as a result. Further, we get one result from our model, and we don't have any understanding of the probability of achieving that outcome. It's just kind of the expected outcome. But it is important um, to think about the probability of your result because probability is strongly related to risk. In finance, we're always concerned about the risk-return trade-off. We should be compensated with additional return if we take on additional risk, and we want to minimize risk for a given amount of return. So thinking about only the baseline result is kind of like thinking about only the return side of things and not the risk side of things. So... With probability modeling, we can analyze the risk of our result, the probability of different outcomes from our model. And an example of um, why you should care about this, think about a situation where you have some capital budgeting project and you have calculated the MPV of that project and ultimately you see that the MPV is positive. So you think, okay, I should take the project. But now you start analyzing the different possibilities for the inputs in your model, and you ultimately are able to come up with a probability distribution of the result. And you find that 98% of the time, the MPV is negative. 2% of the time, the MPV is positive enough that it makes the overall expected MPV positive. Is this still a project that you want to take on when 98% of the time it's going to be a, a, a value losing proposition? Maybe, maybe not, but that's something that you should be considering when you decide whether to take the project, not only just the baseline uh, MPV expected from the baseline model. And then going even further with this, we can also think about not only just uh, the expected outcome or a probability distribution of outcomes from our model, we can also think about different scenarios, and that can be powerful to understand different situations that we could end up in. So the most common application of looking at scenarios is to think about uh, the state of the economy. Are we in a recession? Are we in a normal economy? Or are we in an expansionary period? And that can have a lot of effect on the outcome from a financial model. So it can be useful to think about these cases separately so that you can say, well, if we hit a recession, then we can expect this kind of outcome. But if we stay in this normal economy, then we're going to expect this kind of outcome. So it can help you frame your thinking about the problem in different situations or scenarios. Um, and... Uh, yeah, the, re the reason we care so much about risk and finance is because there's a lot of randomness going on in the real world. You never know truly what is going to happen. And really, there's not going to be one outcome that's just always going to occur. It can be any set of outcomes. Um, and you want to understand the chance of each of those outcomes and not only the one that you expect to happen. So there's a few different ways that we can incorporate probability into our financial models. So we started to already touch on a little bit scenario modeling, where we think about different possible situations we could end up in, uh, recession, neutral economy, expansion economy, or whatever other different scenarios you want to think about. And we basically take all the inputs of the model and think about what would be the values of these inputs in each of these situations or scenarios. So in a bad economy, what's going to be the interest rate? What's going to be the savings rate, 
et cetera, whatever inputs are relevant to your model and kind of lining up all the inputs for that situation to see what the outcome is when all those inputs align with that situation. And then you can assign probabilities to each of these cases and you can take an expected value to determine uh, what you expect to happen based off of your scenarios. So then the next method we'll talk about is internal randomness and internal randomness. The um, randomness or, or probability is included directly into the model itself. There's something core about the model which uses this uh, um, randomness or chance. Um, maybe you have like an investment model um, where the investment return is going to be random each year uh, with some parameters um, or something like that. So it's built into the main model itself. And the last that we'll talk about in the course is Monte Carlo simulation. And Monte Carlo simulation, we'll, we'll dig into that a lot more in a future lecture. But uh, the basic idea is for each one of our inputs, we're going to assign a probability distribution to each of those inputs so that each time you run the model, you get a different value of each one of those inputs based on the distributions. And then by doing that, we run the model a whole bunch of times and we get the results from all those, and that allows us to get a probability distribution of the result from the model as well. So that is what will allow us to say, you know, there's a 37% chance that we'll have a positive MPV uh, and statements like that. So, uh, and then Monte Carlo simulation and scenario modeling are both other methods of exploring the parameter space, just like sensitivity analysis. Whereas internal randomness is just a particular feature of the model that you're building. It's actually built into the base model itself rather than being an extension of the model. So that's a quick overview of probabilistic modeling and how it relates to financial models. We'll come back next time to do a quick math review um, on the mathematical tools that we need to work with probability in our models. So thanks for listening and see you next time.